Hello everybody and welcome back to the R100 community. We're continuing on the theme, along the theme of um, getting the workshop sorted out so that we can actually do some motorbike stuff in here uh, without tripping over everything. Uh, if you look in the, the videos below, you'll see that we've already built the bench, got the lathe up and running, built a shelf, put that up, run some power down to the lathe and we also um, gave a new ne lease of life to an old toolbox that was hanging around. No, now those things are done, what do I need to do next? Well, I, I really need a metal working bench. I've got a bench next to me. It's just basically the, the top of my roll cab. Uh, it's a wooden top, um, so it's, it's not 100% ideal for the sort of projects that um, I get involved with. So what I don't want to do is have another bench in the garage that's there permanently because it tends to end up becoming a dumping ground um, for pretty much anything and everything. Uh, so what I want to do is build a folding metal workbench and I'm going to do that right here underneath the tool board. Um, so it's going to be one metre long, it's going to come out 800 mil. Um, I've bought some hinges that you'll see in a bit uh, that fold away so the legs will fold up underneath and it will fold down against this wall. That means that um, it will stop me leaving too much stuff up against this wall all the time and, and gathering more stuff that I just don't need. Uh, and it will also, like we just said, stop me from dumping loads of stuff on the on top of a bench uh, that doesn't need to be there. Uh, so I've got some uh, 30 mil by 30 mil box section uh, that will make the frame and the legs out of. The hinge for the wall, um, I've got some 25 mil uh, solid steel bar, um, so I think I'm going to put that in the lathe and I'm going to um, turn that into two halves and make a hinge. So we might do that in a separate video or maybe we'll do this in two parts, not sure yet. Uh, so the frame made out of 30 mil box section. I've got some three mil sheet steel coming for the top. Um, so it'll have a nice solid steel top on it. And like I said, I've got some hinges already that will allow the legs to fold away and come down against the wall. So um, let's get cracking guys, let's get it done. Uh, thanks for watching so far. Please hit subscribe, please hit like and Share if you need to. So I'm going to give the top of the bench uh, a go first. And we're going to build the frame. And I'm going to do this in, in one hit, basically. So the back side of the bench top that will go against the wall and the two 800 mil sides will come out of one continuous length of box section. And how I've done this is I've measured 800 mil from the end of the bar and then a meter, because that's the width, and then another 800 mil. And what I do is I've just marked it, that, that's the meter mark. These two 45 degree angles here, what I'll do is I'll cut these out completely I'll leave the back section uncut and then I'll fold this two folds in this length uh, of box section and that will actually give us the front of the workbench and the two sides. The length of the box section is not long enough to make four cuts and have one continuous bench top unfortunately but the piece that will fill in with the same size box section will weld that up and if this works out well, this will be the front section because it will look nice when it's um, when the bench is up. Uh, and the part that we continuously weld will be up against the wall. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't really matter either way. So I'm going to cut these out now and um, see how it comes out. So 
So just cut the these pieces out of the box section. Okay, so you can see that you're left with um, like this triangle, steel pyramids. Okay, so that's come out reasonably well. I use my angle grinder. I made the cuts with uh, a cutting disc on my angle grinder. And then I clean the surfaces with these. Now, I spent years and years and years using a solid grinding disc to prep metal. And you just take too much material away, especially if you're not working with new metal, like a rotten motorcycle, for example, then they're just not ideal. These are brilliant. So if you haven't seen these before, um, I call them flappy discs. Uh, I think the actual name is flap discs. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'll put a link below to some uh, to some generic ones to make them easier to find. They're basically a load of really abrasive pieces of paper laid on top of one another. They last a lot longer than what you would think. They're really really handy, uh, and they're not as brutal on the steel as anything else. So. I made the cuts with these and then I've prepped the metal ready for welding or tacking into place using one of these. I've got some of these ones as well, which is exactly the same thing. However, the abrasive paper is wrapped all the way around. So uh, if you're using it solely on this edge, then they do wear out quite quickly. So bear that in mind if you're gonna buy some of these. I don't use these all the time, I just keep a, a couple in stock just in case they get into an awkward angle now. So you can see here how I've made the cut in the steel and then I've quickly um, gone round with one of those um, flappy grinding discs just to clean the metal up because I have got to tack it into place. You can see the piece of steel that's come out of there. This will be one side of the bench. This will be probably the front of the bench. Made another cut here, as you can see, exactly the same. And then this will be the other side of the bench. So if your piece of box section is long enough, you can actually do this in one hit and you'll have potentially, or hopefully, four nice corners because you've got no cut on this side. So I'm gonna bend this into this to get my 90 degree angle on both sides. The side that's left, we're just gonna cut another piece of box and weld in. So before I tack these up, I just thought I'd quickly show you. It's quite difficult to, to film, especially with my lack of filming experience. So I've just literally made the bend. So we've got a nice corner around here now, as you can see. I've got my um, angled welding magnets in there, which are absolutely fantastic, really handy. It's just a shame that they catch every single piece of swarf within a 10 mile radius. So what we're gonna do is just tack these corners up. Same on this side, it's just overshot the bench here. Just tack these up and we'll end up with two nice corners for the front edge of the bench. So we've got one meter across the back, 800 mil sides. Okay guys, as you can see, gone ahead and made the three sides, uh, sorry, two sides, one front of the workbench. So we just bent these round. Okay, you can see got a nice corner there. I've just tacked it into place for the minute because as we said earlier, the piece of box section wasn't long enough to create this kind of bend continuously all the way around which would have been an ideal situation so if you are thinking of doing this make sure you get a piece of box section that is long enough to create the front the back and the two sides i'm just using what i had in the garage okay so 
two sides and the front because it's come out well they're done they're tacked into place but we do need to obviously fill this back piece in here that's missing now to do this i recommend that you measure from here to the end of your box section before you do anything else and just make sure that your two sides are an identical length if you don't when you weld this piece on the back obviously it's going to sit at an angle if that's the side that's going against the wall and it needs to hinge up it's going to make hinging it a little bit difficult and it could potentially when it hinges out come out at a slight angle which is not going to be ideal so i've done that they're both the same uh, exactly the same size then i've used this tool here just to mark a right angle across the end I'll do the same on another piece of box section and that will slot into these spaces so just for the purpose of this video I've used the clamp to uh, clamp this right angle tool on there so you can see how I marked it out okay uh, if you haven't got one of these rulers with the different attachments then you can just simply use uh, a cheap protractor uh, that you can pick up pretty much anywhere um, for pennies so quite easily done just mark that 45 degree line from the corner make sure you get it the right way this side of your box section needs to be the longer side so the 45 degree angle needs to come up like that okay so i've marked that there and i've also marked it on this side as well i'm going to go ahead and mark it on another piece of box section cut it all out and then get this bit tacked into place So you can see we've laid the, this is three mil sheet steel. Um, it's a metre by a metre. So I've got to cut the back off of it, but I've clamped it on and we won't do it yet, but I will get the steel cut so it's ready to go. And uh, We'll get it tacked on, we'll get the frame done, get all the hinges done for the wall, uh, make sure it all works, and then I'll get the um, top welded on. But it's all marked out, and we know that that's going to work, and uh, it's going to make a nice bench. So the next step, guys, is to make a hinge. 
to go on the bench and bolt to the wall so that we can fold it again down again. So I've got this 25 mil steel bar that I had kicking around. Um, I've just cut these four bits to size with the angle grinder. It's quite heavy, tough stuff actually. Um, so I'm gonna make two hinges. Okay, so one long, one short for each side. And I'm giving you a little overview here and the next time you see these, they'll be completed. They'll be on a separate video as I'm gonna bore these out, bore one side out, turn one side up so that they slot into each other. And I'm gonna do that on my lathe. So I will post that up as a separate video and I'll pop the link to that video below this one. And here we are, the finished product. So uh, the steel that you've just seen before, uh, I turned these up into a male and female piece. There's a grease nipple in the female piece so that um, we can keep the hinge uh, greased up all the time and keep it moving nicely. Uh, this steel is really hard steel. It's not the greatest quality steel. Uh, so my lathe wasn't super happy about turning these up. Um, check the link below for the video where I made these. Um, these have loads of different applications. You could use these for a gate as well uh, as a bench. And really they are a little bit overkill uh, for this project, but uh, it was good to get some uh, additional practice on the lathe. So how are we gonna get these onto the bench and onto the wall? Well. I think what I'm going to do is I've cut, a cup, cut up a couple of bits of box section here and I've got to square the ends off still and tidy them up. But I'm probably going to uh, bolt this to the wall, pop one half of the hinge into the box section, drill a couple of holes, probably weld through the box section. That will hold the hinge in place and then uh, this will be bolted to the wall and then one side will move to the lathe, uh, move to the lathe, one side will move with the bench, sorry. So, um, other idea is to do exactly the same thing, but with the female end. So I'll plug weld that into the box section. I'll drill a hole for the grease nipple and I'll just bolt the grease nipple through the top so the grease nipple stays still and it's easy to get to, which to be fair is probably a better option so um, I'm gonna go ahead with that part of the project now um, and uh, watch along as we get that done so this gives you an idea of how I'm gonna do it so this is the female part of the hinge so this bit here is now sitting in a piece of box section uh, drilled a hole for the top so the grease nipple can go through and we'll just plug weld it from the bottom to help hold it in place and then I'll just weld around the outside and two fixings for the box section up against the wall which is behind the camera. And the, uh, the male part of the uh, hinge can fit in there and this is obviously gonna be attached to the bench so uh, that gives you a rough idea of uh, how we're gonna be doing it, okay? And I'll, I will just plate over the end of that just to tidy it up before we paint it all. Okay, and these are just some standard wall fixings and, and uh, big M8 washers. Obviously some wall plugs as well for it to go into the wall.
So I've just tacked the two pieces into place. So there's the male part tacked inside a piece of box section just on the end there, and it is just rough at the moment. I've tacked the female part inside there. You can see the grease nipple there. So that fits over the end and that works a treat. This is where it's gonna to bolt to the wall. Okay, I did wanna try and keep it all inside the um, overall width of the frame, uh, but I think this way is gonna work better. Certainly easier for me as well. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that although I've done the same on both sides and I've tried to give myself a, a little bit of a difference between the male and the female part of the box section, if this is the wall and I bolt that to the wall, the bench is not gonna spin because this bit is too tight up against the wall. So um, it's an easy fix. All I plan to do is just put a, a, a shim, okay? So a steel spacer between here and the wall and it won't need to be uh, very big. So it's not gonna be the end of the world. So I think that's gonna work quite well. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish welding that up and then cleaning it up and I'll see you guys in a bit. So in this shot here, I've just done a trial fitting against the wall. Uh, there's no steel shims uh, behind the hinges, so it's not really moving at the moment. Just wanted to check that it was level and that it was a good working height for me. Okay, so quick update. Bench is bolted to the wall. I had to make some aluminium shims. That I'll pop a picture on the screen now so you can see those. Uh, they've just bought the bench out enough so that the hinges uh, clear the, uh, the, the wall when it's folding up and down. So that's all good. Now, I have actually got one leg. I've got both the legs measured up and cut, and one leg is actually uh, welded into place. But before I went and put the other one on, I thought you might like to see the hinges. Um, I found these on Amazon. And... Uh, you just simply pull this and then the hinge folds in half so they actually lock into place which is a, a, a nice little feature. So you can see here I've had to put a piece of steel in there and I've actually angled the, the leg, put the leg at an angle I should say so it folds up into the middle and then the other one will come across it so a uh, couple of little hurdles that we've had to overcome that I'll explain uh, when I've got the other leg fitted, but it works and it's it's all looking good. Okay, so we just fabricated the leg on the left-hand side that you just uh, seen. And we just 
I just sorted out a little bit of a problem with the box section that holds that um, hinge on the right hand side as well. So far so good, uh, it hinges backwards and forwards uh, really well. Uh, it's with inside, just about inside the reveal of the wall here, so uh, that's all good. And let me see if I can get a clear shot of this. When you lift it up, the legs fold out, the hinges pop into place and uh, with a spirit level it's all it's all good so uh, I'm happy however there is one small issue which uh, some of you may have already spotted the issue is here when the legs are crossed like this uh, this right hand leg or if you do it the other way around it's the left hand leg is gonna protrude further than the top of the workbench so what will happen is the bench will sit a lot further out probably somewhere around there which kind of defeats the object of having a bench that folds against the wall so what i'm going to do is chop this leg where this line is here i'm going to put a hinge on the back so that this leg will fold in backwards here and get out of the way that one and then this right hand leg will be able to sit against the wall with this one that's the plan anyway so i've got a pile of scraps here that i found in my garage and i've got to try and make something to sort out that right hand leg and make it fold in half so uh, i've got a gate hinge i've got something that i think was left over from our putting our kitchen in at home I don't know where that came from. It's a latch. Um, again, just stuff I had kicking around at home. So I need to make that right hand leg bend in half and then I have to hold it in place, not only when it's fully extended and the workbench is up, but when the workbench is folded away. So I'm gonna take this gate hinge, which is way too big at the moment and also not ideal, but like I said, I had it kicking around, so why not use it? And I need to basically chop it down, mark it out, chop it down, cut it to size. So I'm just roughly marking out, putting a couple of straight lines onto the hinge roughly where I know it's going to need to be. I don't need all of that hinge, so I'm just chopping it down and then I'll, I'll either file or grind it uh, to match the shape of the, the box section of the leg. You can see I'm doing the long part and then I do uh, the short part of the hinge as well. And I'm actually using the bench that I've built to do this, so that's a nice little touch as well.
So this piece of work has taken a, a lot longer than we wanted to. So that's it. That's the right hand leg of the bench has now got its own elbow. So as you've just seen, we, we made this hinge, cut it right down from a, an old gate hinge. So everything I've used, I had kicking around, uh, found this old pin that was part of a plate uh, from a, a kitchen in hinge that we recently fitted in the house. Um, this latch here, uh, again, just kicking around, as you saw where it came from. Um, it's all rough at the moment. I need to grind it down and clean it all up. Uh, and then an old, this was on our, our old kitchen door when we moved in and uh, thankfully I'm a womble and uh, anything like that I would always keep. Uh, just got to change the screws in here because they're the ones that were with it and they're not um, they're not quite man enough for the job they're made for timber really so it's going to change them out in a minute but if I unlatch it now down here and uh, easier said than done with one hand I can just lock the right hand leg in place like that and then it folds against the wall nicely now. Uh, again, just got to tidy it all up and start thinking about giving it all a, a lick of paint. So uh, I've actually cut the, measured out and marked out the steel for the top, but I measured it to this back line here. And now we have these parts of the hinges so I'm just going to um, lay it out again and just bring the, the steel up to the back here. Otherwise, stuff uh, is level. Nothing's going to roll off, but things could drop down the back when we're using the bench. So I'm just going to mark the steel out again. Um, and then I'm going to strip it down, get some primer on it, uh, tidy up a few bits like these aluminium shims just cut them to shape so you can't see them but yeah happy the right hand leg bit of a pain uh, probably an extra few hours there that I didn't want to spend on it but it is what it is Hello everybody, it's finally completed and it has taken a crazy amount of time to get what I thought would be a reasonably short project done, but these things happen. I've got the top on, um, so the last clip you saw, we painted the frame up, primed it, painted it, uh, and then I've bolted it back against the wall, checked it all works remarked out the top and apologies i did forget to press record on that one so i've marked the top out again um in a slightly different way than what you just previously saw me mark it out in the video earlier on because i just wanted it to go past the one half of the hinge at the back here 
So I've done that, I've put it on top and I've welded it from underneath and I've just kept it off of the uh, edge of the box section here. If you see the video below for the bench we built for the mini lathe, I completed that in a day and it was drying that evening. I bolted it to the wall the following day. So it literally took me a day to do that one. Uh, the legs have worked out really well. Um, see the link below for where I purchased the folding hinges from with the latch on. Um, the right hand legs worked out well with the elbow in the middle so it sits flat against the wall. So what's coming up next for you lucky people? Well, I've just ordered some um, proper workshop plug sockets, so they're, they're metal ones. Uh, We've been extending the rig main, as you've seen in other videos in here, because there was only one plug socket in here. Um, so I'm just gonna change them out for proper workshop back boxes and double plugs with USB sockets as well, but they're suitable for a workshop and they're not plastic. And we'll also put one here as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and I'm probably not gonna do a video on that one, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I do need to mount my belt sander somewhere in here and have a little bit of a move around. There's no um, stand for my belt sander at the moment, so maybe I can knock up a small stand for my belt sander and we'll do a little bit of a video on that. And also, as you've seen, especially in this video, but in a couple of the others as well, it's crazy cold in here sometimes. Um, so I need to get some, some heating in here and I've got some ideas about how to do that as well and I will do a video of that. Um, I also need to run some compressed air lines. Um, so I have a compressor that's mounted um, outside to keep it out of the way and to keep the noise down. Um, so I need to um, get that plumbed in, okay? The, the compressor's in. Uh, it's wired up and it's fitted outside and it's all working, but there's no airlines in here and I, and I don't want airlines running all over the floor. So I'm going to put some um, uh, wall mounted airline on the wall with a couple of different points in some places and I'll do a video on that one. Then moving forward from there, we can actually do some motorcycle videos, which is what you guys want to see and really what the channel uh, is all about. So. Thanks for watching guys. Please hit subscribe. When you've hit subscribe, comment below to tell me you subscribed and I will message you all back. And don't forget to like the video and share it as well. Thanks everyone.